What time is it? 36. 35. All right, guys. Welcome to Sunday morning. Perfect weather, huh? This is nice. We have a, a little gamer playing today. If you get hit by a, a jacaranda blossom, it's one point, okay? We're going to tally them all up at the end, see who has the most, okay? So keep track, keep record. All right, let's pray and get started this morning. Dear Father, we just come before you. We just thank you so much for bringing us together. We ask that your spirit would be upon us, that we just know you more, fall more in love with you, and we love you so much, Jesus. We just receive our our praise and our worship and our thanks this morning for all that you are and all that you've done. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. amen. Let's worship the Lord. Sing loud. You are not alone. You are not alone if you are lonely when you feel afraid. You're not the only, we are all the same In need of mercy to be forgiven and be free It's all you got to lean on, but thank God it's all you Mercy, mercy.
Mercy, mercy, bring me to my knees. of the world.
Yes, Father, we just thank you for this time of worship, Lord. Thank you for just letting us gather here this beautiful Sunday morning just to hear your message, Father. We ask that you speak to us this morning, Lord, as you just write your message upon our hearts today, and that you just bless us throughout this day and our weeks, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. Amen and amen. Let's stand up, turn around, say hi to somebody you know you don't know. Hey, guys. What? What about all women? What? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> hey guys online, how y'all doing? Susan. Hey, Craig. Oh, I, I, I just went to What? Okay. So what's the first one? The first one? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. You got your bulletin. Let's see what's going on here at Calvary Long Beach. A couple things are going on. First of all, every Monday night we get together online for now uh, for the women's Bible study. Uh, the Zoom group starts at 645. And, of course, our uh, the Bible study starts at 8 on Monday nights. And it's coming to a close. So let's finish well, ladies. And it's going to be a good time this Monday. Also, don't forget uh, for you ladies as well, the Joyful Life Women's Tea is coming up. And if you want to sign up, sign up today with Janine. Janine's in the pink right there. She will take your sign-ups. And uh, we would love to have you. And it's going to be, uh, what is it? who is it? Ruth and Naomi. You're going to do tag teams, sister, uh, uh, little sisterhood action going on. Ruth and Naomi, and then every, and then this is the first one, and you're going to have two more this summer, and it's going to be two women every time that we're connected. So, ladies, don't miss out. And then you get a tea over it, you know, and just get your little tea and crumpets and all that stuff. I don't know what that means, but uh, ladies, do, hopefully you do, and sign up. It's going to be a great time. And, of course, the first women's tea is uh, June 19th at Calvary Chapel Pacific Coast. And, uh, would and they're gonna, their women are going to be joining up. We're hosting it. We'd love to have you guys. Um, don't forget about the Masters Way Men's Breakfast, May 29th. That's coming up this Saturday, right? Is that this Saturday? Yeah. So it's this Saturday. We're going to have a full spread for you guys. And remember, our men's breakfasts aren't like little. It, we're not serving quiche, okay? <laughs> we got bacon. We got sausage. We got ham steaks. We got eggs. Uh, we got tortillas. We have a, uh, what else we got? We got a ton of stuff. So juice, coffee, uh, no pancakes this time. Gary's going to be grilling out. Also, if you guys want to help grill, uh, see me afterwards, and I'll put you in touch with Gary, and you guys can help uh, uh, cook all this stuff up, okay? So it's a lot of fun, and you don't want to miss it, all right? So we would love to have you, and... Uh, so uh, who, who wants to come? I just want to know how many guys are coming to this shindig coming up. How, who's the guys? Okay, one, okay, one, two, three. Mom, you're not included. One, one. Okay, cool. So be there. It's at my house. The address is in the bulletin. We'd love to have you. Go team is going to be going out for sure on June 12th. Are you guys going to go sooner? Oh, if you want to go witnessing today on 2nd Street, uh, Make sure that uh, it, it's a great time, okay? Just passing out tracks, praying for people. And if you want to go see, see Brad and Olga, Brad and Olga, raise your hand. They, they're running the ministry, the GO team. Go with them today is 2nd Street. And then, of course, the 12th is there as well. 
uh, sharing your faith. Uh, midweek Bible study Wednesday night, and uh, like usual at the house, and uh, it will be good. So uh, praise the Lord with that. Um, the uh, If you haven't heard, uh, Keith Gwynn, a longtime member at Calvary Chapel, Long Beach, uh, we prayed that he, he had a stroke. Uh, if you didn't know about that, he, he did go home to be with the Lord. So uh, we just, uh, we really are going to miss Keith. He's a big servant here at this church. And, uh, but he's doing good. I remember many a conversation when Keith was like, I'm just ready to go to heaven. And boy, that happened. And you know, we're, Christians are crazy, dude. Because it's like, you know, we're going to miss Keith. We're, we're going to get tearful. We're going to miss him. But, dude, he's so happy right now. Life does not end at death for us. It's eternal. How great is that? What a hope. And so he is doing really good right now. All prayers have been answered. And we look forward to seeing him again, which we will. So we'll let you know. I think it's going to be June 1st, the memorial at uh, Calvary Chapel, Santa Fe Springs. That's his wife's home church. And uh, Teresa, and keep Teresa in your prayer, of course. And we'll let you know more details. And we'll put it online and, and let you know where that's going to be at. Okay, guys? And so just uh, uh, remember that and pray for Teresa and praise the Lord for Keith. So if you got a Bible, open up to Ephesians chapter 1. And we'll get into what the Lord has for us today. Let's pray. Dear Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace towards us. And we ask that you would teach us everything that we need to know about you today. That we can find out about what it means to be a Christian. What it means to be a follower of you. And Lord, I thank you so much for all that you're doing at this church. Lord, we do ask that you would just get us a building someday. But Lord, until you do, we're very content with what you have for us. Thank you for taking it through it all. Lord, we lift up the Gwynn family. That you'd be with them, be with Teresa, be with all the family, and Lord, just be their comfort. We just thank you for Keith and all that he means to us, Lord. And Father, we just look forward to the day that we'll all be together in glory. How great that day is. And until then, we're stoked with being in the park and being with you right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we've been looking and we've been taking our time <laughs> going through Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, someone told me the other day, they said, Pastor Andrew, how long are we going to be in Ephesians chapter 1? And I said, well, until we're done. And then we'll be in Ephesians chapter 2. It is a lot of stuff there, man. It is like, seriously, it is the supplantation of stuff. It's so much in Ephesians chapter 1. It is a bountiful just buffet of just beautiful blessings. And it is so amazing. But this is the thing, guys, that we need to realize. If you thought Ephesians 1 was amazing, wait till you get to Ephesians 2. It just gets better and better. And so, but we're addressing and we're looking at Paul's first prayer to the Ephesian people. He's praying for the Ephesian church. And he's praying that God gives them a wisdom, a revelation, a knowledge, an understanding, an enlightenment of Jesus. I just want you to get it, man. Paul is praying. Lord, let them get it. Let them see God. I don't know about you guys, but I pray a lot of that for myself. And I pray a lot of that for you guys. Lord, just let them understand and see God. I mean, when that comes to knowledge, that's where it's at, man. I just want to get God. I mean, the whole world is searching for God or some uh, uh, higher being. And, God, and Paul is praying, Lord, let him, them get it. And it's specifically that they would know three things. First of all, that you would know the hope of his calling. We talked about that last week. Secondly, the value that you are to God. You know, God really thinks you're valuable. Isn't that amazing? Because I don't know about you. Maybe you, who are we? And God is just going, you are awesome. I love you. And he's talking about the church. And he loves it really the whole world for God to so love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life and the third thing that we're supposed to know is what we're going to tackle today 
Paul wants us, and he's praying for the Ephesians as well as us, to know the power of God. Let's read the passage. It says in verse 19, and to know and what is the exceeding greatness of his, God's power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. So he talks about this exceeding greatness of his power, the power of God. Now that word exceeding in the Greek is a very cool word. It means to throw beyond. There's a, a dad behind me playing catch with his kid. And you know what? Wouldn't that be a really funny thing to watch? Or not really funny. What if that father just threw the ball over the kid's head? Just threw it over the head. Now just imagine, that's the word that's used there, exceeding. It's to throw beyond. That's the word that's being used there. Exceeding means to throw beyond. I actually... It, it, it's cool because the, the Greek word is the word called hooperbalo. It, it actually has the word ball in it. Hooperbalo. It's, just, it's where we get our word hyperbole from. It's exceedingly, exceedingly above it. It's a, to throw beyond. And he says this power of God is beyond. The other times you see it, and it's described and used in the Bible, it's used to describe the exceeding glory of God in 2 Corinthians 3.10, the exceeding grace of God in 2 Corinthians 9. It talks about the exceeding riches of God's that he has, the exceeding riches of God, Ephesians 2. The exceeding love of God, Ephesians 3.19, and here is the exceeding power of God. I love that. about I, God is exceeding. He just goes beyond you know, one step beyond. Actually, it's not just one step beyond. It's a lot of steps beyond. He just, he, it's overkill. It's overkill with the Lord. You think, oh, it, it's like when I was a kid growing up, when I was in college, I would invite my friends over from, from Bible college and they would come over and my mom would cook for them. And my mom has this kind of like a thing in her brain where she has to feed people. And so if you come over for dinner, it's not going to be just dinner. She goes too far. And she feeds them. I remember I had my best friend over and we had that night burgers and fries. So he's thinking, burgers and fries. But this is, she goes hyperbolo. She goes to exceeding. These burgers were an inch and a half thick. Grilled onions and melted cheddar cheese with the best beef possible. And, and you had to hold it with two hands and kind of, you know, cradle the sucker. It's like eating a baby. It's just like, oh. It's like, oh, oh, oh. And, and, and my friend Jamie is like going, and, you know, the big steak fries. Not the skinny fries, the steak fries. It's like a quarter of a potato is each wedge. It's. And, 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 and Jamie's all like, what? This is like overkill, man. I said, yeah, you're here. You know, my dad's over there eating his burger. He's like, you can come over anytime you want, Jamie. You can come over anytime you want. And so, and then we get, wake up the next morning and she had, egg, she goes, you guys want some ham and eggs? And Jamie goes, yeah, sure. And she has mason jars of orange juice. The, the ham steak is those big round ham steaks per person. Covered with fried eggs. And Jamie goes, this is too much. It's an overkill. And that's what God's power is. It's overkill. Towards us. His glory, his grace, his riches, his love, and his power are overkill. Just like my mom will feed you overkill, God will pour out his love, his riches, his power, his grace, and his glory towards us in overkill. You're like, really? Are you sure? Oh, yeah, dude. 
It is so amazing. That's what God does. So that's just the word exceeding. But look at the word greatness. The word greatness is the word megathos. It's where we get the word mega. You ever been to 7-Eleven? Anything mega at a 7-Eleven is just big. You go to those truck stops, driving across country. You go to a, you know, a, what's that place? That's Stuckey's. It's the, what's that place in Texas with the beaver? Uh, there's this little place. That you, we Californians, I was, I was blown away. It is the biggest gas station, 370 gas pumps. And this place, it has a beaver as a, as a mascot. And I'll never forget walking in there and they had everything. And it was just, it was, and they had these drink containers. They had small, medium, large, extra large, and Megatron. I don't know what, it was just massive. It was Megathos. And that's the greatness. So it doesn't, it just go, it goes beyond and above. Really, if you want to get to the English vernacular here, it's above and beyond down its power. It's above, it's great, and it's beyond. It is so amazing. He wants us to know the exceeding greatness of his power towards us. The word power is the word dunamis, where we get the word dynamite from. It, it, it shows a force, not just a, 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 a chaos from an explosion, but it's a force. And, but notice the word his. It's his power, not your power. We get quite cocky. We think we got a lot of power. But look at me. And we strut into places and we think we're the biggest thing on the block. We got nothing compared to his power. His power is where it's at. His power, it belongs to God and God alone. It's not ours, it's not the human race, it's not a machine, it's not even nature. And it's not, and I want to specific, really get on, it's not supernatural, it's divine. It's divine power. Paul's prayer is that we, that you know the power of God. And you know, we, we, we humans often mimic mankind. When we invent our gods, we make our gods just like us. We place our own limitations upon gods. You see that in Greek mythology all the time. Study Greek mythology. Check it out. Those deities from Zeus, Mercury, Venus, Athena, you, you name them, will be just like us. They'll have some supernatural strength, a supernatural ability, but man, they're just like us. They're greedy, they're mean, they're petty, they're shallow, they're lustful, they're vindictive. And those gods that are made by mankind mirror, mimic us, humanity in our fallen state, in our sinful state. And it just mirrors that. And this is the scary thing. When we talk about the one true God of heaven and earth, we so often will project our own characteristics upon him. He might be the true God, but then we look at him and consider him to be just like me. And we go, oh, he, I'm fearful, he's fearful. I'm limited, he's limited. And that's not the case with the one true God. If I can't, then God can't. And we so often try to reason God out. We try to we do practicality over power, but it's not so with God and his power. God's power is his very nature. There's this thing called omnipotence. It's a fancy word that means he's all powerful. It's in his very nature. It's, his, it's who he is. And not just that, it's not just that he's all powerful God in heaven. He, that all-powerfulness, get this, guys. His all-powerfulness is intertwined with everything else in his nature. Everything else in his personality is intertwined with that power. So, for instance, we know God is love, but the love is backed up by the power. It's, it, the power is in the love, and the love is in the power. It's like a beautiful little Kool-Aid mix of just awesomeness. 
I'm just craving Kool-Aid today, guys. I'm sorry. It was on the brain. But it's just this wonderful mixture of just, oh, you, you talk about how God is everywhere at the same time. He's omnipresent. Well, get this. His omnipresence is also mixed with the all-powerfulness. It just mixes together. You talk about God's mercy. It's mixed with his power. It, you talk about God's patience. It's mixed with his power. See, God's power is intertwined with everything. Now, you can take that if you want to do your own study. Every attribute of God is mixed together with all the other attributes. You could take them separately, and then you could take them all together. That's the greatness of God. That's the awesomeness of God. It's wrapped into everything. God's power crosses through every bit of his character and actions towards us. Number three, guys, God's power is unique. Nothing can compare to it. Now, we try. We try to imagine it as dynamite, an atomic explosion. But it's unique. God's power is totally God's power. You can't compare it. It's power to, this is God's power. This is why it's unique. It's power to create. It, it, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the Hebrew, that word create means bara. That means to make out of nothing. To make out of nothing. Nothing was there and he just, boom. And he just made it out of nothing. He spoke it into existence. Psalm 33, 6 teaches us that. And countless other verses. How he just spoke it into existence. Try that right now. Try, just try, you know, double, double. Double, double. One million dollars. One, speak it and watch what happens. Nothing. Because you ain't got no power. You sure as heck don't have God's power. Power to create. It's power to deliver. You see that all through the Old Testament. You see, you know what, I love my, crossing the Red Sea, that takes power. G get a bowl of chicken noodle soup today. Get that bowl and go. <sighs> Try to make a path with your breath in the bowl of soup. <laughs> Try to make a path like God made with the, breast, bre the, with the breath of his nostrils and cut a path in the ocean so that the, that Three million people would walk through on dry ground. You try to do that just with your little bowl of soup. Try to do that. Yeah, everybody's like, I'm going to do that. I was like, okay. Now, it will splash. Watch out. Don't hit the guy in front of you. And don't use tomato soup. That will be a mess. But, man, you, you try to do that. It won't happen. If you're in the bathtub, <laughs> try it. It won't work. That's the thing. But he has power to deliver, to deliver us. He did that with the children of Israel. They were in slavery. He sends 10 great plagues. That's power. Daniel's in a lion's den. He shut the mouths of lions. You jump into the San Diego Wild Animal Park. You go and see those lions. And you try to shut up the mouth of a lion that's coming after you. It's not going to be easy. And that's the thing. God can do that, though. He has the power to do that. He had the power to stop a giant with five, just with one stone by the hand of David so that he has power to deliver. That's the type of unique power we're talking about. Oh, oh get this. Not just is it power to create or power to deliver. It's power to incarnate the second person of the Trinity. Remember when he came to, when the angel came to Mary, it says that the Holy Spirit will come and overshadow you. And he'll create this, and, he, and, he'll, and he'll give birth to the Son of God. And, and Mary was just like, Mary, who was around 14 years old at the time, 14, 15, she didn't get the biology on that. She, she's like, I got a question. How's that going to happen? And I'm a virgin. And he says, don't worry about it. And then in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, he says, for with God, nothing is impossible. That's the type of power we're talking about. The power to send his only begotten son into this world in human form. The divine and also into, becomes a man. He has the power to judge sin. God has the power to judge sin. He could have judged us individually, but he had the power to say, I'm going to judge 
your sin upon my only begotten son, the second person of the Trinity, I'm going to pour out my wrath for you upon him. That's power. The power of the cross. And he also has the power to raise Jesus from the dead. We're going to get into that a little bit more because it's one of the greatest illustrations of the power of God is the resurrection from the dead. It's the greatest demonstration of God's power is that Jesus rose from the dead. And also he has the power to us that Jesus ascended on high. We're going to cover that today as well. He sent him to be born of a woman and he brought him back. And as he ascended on high, seated at the right hand of the father and get this, he has the power to give. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we then have his power in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus, the Father, God in heaven, the whole Godhead, but the Father is the only one. The Lord is the only one who has the power to save a lost soul from his sins. The only one. You could try to save yourself from your own sins. You could try to wash your sins away. You could try to balance them out by doing your good works, but it won't work. Only the Lord has the power to forgive sin. Only he has the power to rip a lost soul out of the depths of hell and death and the curse and pride and arrogance and pull them out like he did with me and pull it out and guys get this that we have a chance to live for the Lord and to live for him in Acts chapter actually Romans if you want to turn there you can Romans chapter 8 verse 35 <laughs> in Romans 8 35 Look what it says, guys. In Romans 8, 35, it says this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Now pay attention, guys. It says this in verse 37, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's powerful. Nothing can separate you from that. He has the only, he, it, that's called, his power cares for us. The power of his love for us. And he has the power to come again, which he will. God's power was given to Jesus. Turn over to Matthew chapter 28 real quick. The last verse of Matthew. The last part of the book. In Matthew 28... Jesus is talking to his disciples in Galilee and he says to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given. Jesus says, I got all, and that word authority is power. All power has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Now that's a lot of power. I started thinking about that. You know, you think of all the atoms that make up earth and heaven. The atomic power of every individual thing. You know, it's a, it's a mind blower when you look at atoms and you look at science. You know, the, the scientists will tell you that you have protons that are clumped together. You have two positives that are together. Two positive entity, entities, protons that are clumped together, mixed with neutrons, surrounded by a negative electrons, and in that, and they, it, you, it's all together. What's holding that together? It shouldn't be held together, but it is. And we know that 
well, they don't know what it is. They, they call it dark matter or things like that. We know what it is because it tells us in Colossians that, that the Lord God himself holds, his, holds everything together. He's the dark matter. He's the one that holds every atom together. And they, and, but what happens if we split one of those atoms? When God allows one of those atoms, just one atom to be released, what happens? A chain reaction and power shoots forth. We see it as an atomic bomb. And you have a chain reaction, you see it. And that, that power that comes out from that one little piece of mass. And this is the thing. Jesus says here, all power has been given to me on earth and in heaven. God has it all. He owns it all. He has all authority, all power is given to him. And then get this. And now, also in Matthew chapter 28, it says, All power has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. And then he says, Now because I have all the authority, because I'm in charge and I have the power, you, Christian, you go forth. And live your life and make disciples and tell people about the Lord. And God's power is given to us because he's in charge and in Acts chapter 1-8 because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when he comes upon us, we shall have power. You know, today's Pentecost Sunday. This is the Sunday that we celebrate the coming upon of the Holy Spirit upon the church. It's kind of like, like the church has Easter and we also have Pentecost Sunday. And we, we remember that day. Now we have all of God's power given to us to live for him in obedience. But so often, get this guys, we lack the willingness to do so. In fact, we should have faith. And we don't. In Jude tra chapter, uh, Jude, oh, it's only one chapter in Jude, sorry. But in Jude 24, it says, now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. The power of God. King Asa declared the, the, the power of God to deliver him from the Ethiopians. Psalm 62, 11, it says, God has spoken at once. Twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. Ephesians 3.20, we'll cover it in a couple of weeks. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So hopefully you guys got now, you have been taught by the Holy Spirit that God's power is amazing. And, it, and here's the next part in verse 9. His power is towards us. Look what it says there in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9. It says that his power towards us who believe. The power of God is towards us who believe. There it is, guys. It's real and it's present. And if you want it, you got to have faith in God. You got to have faith. Faith is the key that releases it. It releases it. It's like when you, when I was a kid, you know, I was an only child, so I did a lot of only child things. I was in the backyard and I filled up a trash bag filled with water hanging from a tree limb. And I remember just, and I was, and we didn't have a pool. So I remember getting a little, getting a butter knife, getting underneath the trash bag and just cutting it and then letting the water just go boosh all over me. I remember doing that and just it was a lot of fun. In fact, I, Kelly's not home. She's in Kentucky. I might do that today. I don't know. <laughs> but this is the thing. When you, it was that, that cutting it and that power came out of that water. That's faith. That's faith. Faith is the ignition. It's the, it's the detonator that releases the power. You got to have faith in Christ. The Bible says it. Remember, it says that if you have the faith, of a mustard seed, it will move mountains. Jesus says that. Remember the woman with the 12-year the issue of blood? Oh, horrible disease, horrible illness. And it says that she thought, if I just touch 
those little Jewish tassels that hang from the hem of his prayer shawl. If I just touch one of those little, little threads, I'll be healed. And it says that she crawled over and went boop, boop. Just, just touched it. And Jesus and a massive amount of crowd just went, whoa, 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 whoa. Who touched me? And then Peter's over there like, uh, everybody? Everybody has the Lord. He goes, no, 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 no. Someone touched me in faith. And I felt virtue or power leave me. And then here she is. She raises her hand. She knew she was healed. She knew it. And what did Jesus say at her healing and really every healing? You know, go, be healed, sin no more. And what does he say? Your faith has made you whole. It's when faith is in our hearts and trust in God, it activates and ignites the power of God in our lives. If you just trust him. And that's the cool thing. You got to have faith in the Lord. We can have faith in so many stupid things. So many silly things we could trust and put reliance upon. But do you have faith in God? That faith is what brings the power. It's what, it, what, what does it take to become a born again Christian? What does it take to go to heaven? It's not good works. It's faith. You're saved by grace through faith, not by works, lest any man should boast. It's faith. And guys, with this said, it's not signs and wonders faith I'm talking about. It's not some televangelist faith. Stop that. I'm not going there. You know, if you just have that mustard seed faith and you give me 10 bucks, you'll get thousands more. Praise the Lord. Oh, shut it. That's baloney, dude. That's, that is baloney. The bad kind, the generic form. That is bad. Guys, it's not name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. Faith I'm talking about here. I'm talking about biblical faith. Trust in the Lord. Put full reliance upon him. Watch what happens. I loved when <laughs> we, we, we brought Michael and Brad onto the board. I was so stoked to have them on there. And I was talking to Brad about something having to do with some of the finances. And I was talking to Michael and Brad about it at the, at when we, the first day, our first board meeting. And I was like, I don't know if we should do this or the other. I'm just, you know, what do you think, guys? And I'll never, I said, I don't think we should do this because of that. And, and Brad, God bless him. Brad just looked at me and he goes, how about we do it and just trust the Lord? And I'm just like, yes. I needed that quick, swift kick to my spiritual backside. Trust the Lord. And when we stepped out in faith, God did some great things. And we're still just stoked about that. And, and the Lord's doing things. This faith is a sweet and beautiful, trust-filled assurance in the mighty power of the almighty God. I want to ask you a question. Do you know that the power of God is for you today, right now? Look at verse 20. Paul describes this faith and wants to illustrate this faith by saying this, this power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the, his right hand in the heavenly places. It, it's, Paul describes this power through two events in the life of Jesus, the resurrection and the ascension. The power towards us and is for us. Number one, Jesus is risen. He's alive. That's power. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we know that death has been beaten. You know, the greatest thing we fear in life is not fear itself, it's death. We always fear it. It's always knocking at our door. It's there. But we don't fear death because Jesus is alive. Of course your bodies will fail. Your heart will stop. Your liver will rot. I don't know. 
Something's going to get you. It's going to pop. Feel good today, guys. <laughs> Something's going to pop. Or, or, or there's going to be a bus in your future going really fast. <laughs> Something's going to happen. An accident, a trip. Something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sue. I love, but it's going to happen. The body quits. The body will fail you. But we have a hope. See, the real you is not your body. You're living in a bad tent on a long vacation. That's what it is. But get this, guys. The real you is your spirit, your soul. And that lives, that lives on. And it all depends whether you're going to live in life or death. And the choice is yours. Do you want to live in heaven, which is eternal life? Or do you want to live in hell, which is eternal death? The choice is ours. We share in the resurrection. If you have faith in Jesus, he washes your sins away and guarantees you eternal life. Because where he is, there you will be also. He raised from sin, death curse he and then if he because he rose from the death not just that he raises us from the world and its ways he raises us from temptation and he will and get this he will raise your body in glorification you'll get a new body in heaven how great is that but that's just the resurrection and his power is seen at his ascension when he ascended that was i i would have loved to have seen that Jesus is talking to the disciples and he goes, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses in Judea, or in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And it says that as he talked, he ascended up and he was ascending. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, right? That as he's talking, he says, and you shall be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you in Jerusalem. And as he's going up in Judea and up a little... Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. And he was caught up in the clouds. That's power. And we know that he wasn't just go up in the clouds and Jesus up in the clouds was cruising around playing a harp. He went up into heaven and it says, and get this guys, it says that he sat at the right hand of the Father. That is not a lazy man's position. To be at the right hand of anybody is to be the person who has all the power, all authority, and he's running the show. First Peter 3.22 says that the angels are subject to him. Romans 8.24, that he makes intercession. At Romans 8.34, he makes intercession for us night and day. To be at the right hand of the Father means you're in a place of authority. It means also you're in a place of help. You're there to intercede and to help people. He's there to help us before the throne room of God. And it's also a place of pleasure. Psalm 1611 says, In your presence is fullness of joy, God. And at your right hand, what is there? Pleasures forevermore. And what's at the right hand of God? Jesus is. And look at verse 21, and we'll close with this verse. It says this, and talking about how he seated him in heavenly places, Far above all principalities and all powers, mights and dominions, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. These phrases, principality, powers, mights, and dominions, are in direct connection with angelic beings. I don't know, we're going to get to this in Ephesians chapter 6 in a couple more years. But when, we, <laughs> but when we get to Ephesians 6, you're gonna learn about principalities and powers and mights and dominions. And those are rankings of angels. We really don't know how they rank. You know, when you look at the army, there's corporal, there's lieutenant, there's captain, there's general. In the angelic world, there are these things. Now, we don't know how those gel. There's also things called seraphim and cherubim. But we don't know how it goes down. And that's in the angelic world, but also in the demonic world. Actually, when you see these phrases, it's more connected with the demonic world than anything else. And there's a ranking. 
And he says, guys, he's over those angels. Remember, angels are created beings. Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, the Godhead, Jehovah, that is not created. It has always been. And so they're above that. Now notice the power of God is seen in the resurrection. Jesus is alive. And in Colossians 3, 1, it says that we have been raised with Christ. We're with him at the resurrection. Just as much as our sin went to him at the cross, our lives are now in the risen Savior. Isn't that rad? We're alive because he's alive. And that's the power of God. And get this. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Wow. We're with him. And I, I love what it says. We're above every spiritual enemy. That, tempt, that The tempter, the enemy. You know, the, the, the person who brings fear, the person who brings discouragement, the person who brings temptation to sin, the person who brings a, 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 an addiction to your heart, addiction to your mind, a person who causes so much crud that we experience on a daily stinking basis. It's from the enemy. It's from Satan. But he's above it. He's above them. He's seated above them. It says they're far above all principalities and powers. And get this. And it says, and then, so that's the spiritual realm. And he says, he's above every name that is named. That's in every, everything that could be named. You name it, he's above it. So what, what are you freaked out by the IRS? That has a name. He's above it. Are you afraid? If you, if you can name it, it, give it a name. Cancer, he's above it. COVID, he's above it. Death, he's above it. Whatever. Government, he's above it. Anything that can, anything that's a noun, he's above it. That's power. And then, not get this, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. He's above the time. That means forever. This age means this world as well, but it's, it's, it's forever. Now you might say, Pastor Andrew, I'll just be honest. I don't feel like I have God's power in my life. I don't feel it. I feel kind of puny. I feel like my spiritual life is like, I feel like Barney Fife. If you know who that is. I'm just, I'm scrawny. I'm just frail. But guys, it's not about feeling God's power. It's not about feeling the goosebumps and like, oh, oh the power of God is upon me. No, it's not about feeling it. It's about knowing it. I want to know the power of God. And that is where it's at. Is not that Paul's prayer for us? He's not saying, oh, Ephesians, oh, God, I just pray that the Ephesians just feel your power. No. That they would know your power. That they would know it. How can I know and experience God's power? Because, you know, it's not about feeling it, but you will experience it. You'll see it. How do you experience it? How do you know it? Number one, here it is. You must be born again. You have to give your life to Jesus. See, the first taste we have of the power of God is when he removes the sin, when he delivers us from hell, when he pulls us out of the... I love how the, the psalmist says, you have removed, my, removed me from the dung heap. <laughs> How vivid is that? I just imagine my whole life is a pile of poo-poo and, and I was living in it. And you pulled me out of it. And you washed my sins away. That's power. And he's the only one who did it. So you must be born again. And you gotta be, and secondly, you gotta be baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
When you ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you like he promised in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. I use this ask for it. I need your power, Lord. And then third, you plug in. You abide with Christ. Prayer, the word, fellowship, worship, service. How can we have power if we don't pray? How can we know him if we aren't in the word? How can we experience God's power when we're not experiencing the body of Christ? Plug in to the, into the Lord. And then lastly, if you want the power of God, have faith in the Lord. Trust him. And he'll meet you there. Trust him. And he'll meet you there and you'll experience the power of God and you'll know it like you've never known it before. Try it out. Just try it out. Lord, I'm just going to trust in you for this thing. Now, remember, faith is not a lazy thing. It's like, well, what are you, I got a bill, so I'm not going to work. I'm just going to sit at home and let him. Okay, you, here's my electric bill, Lord. You handle it. Is that what I'm supposed to do, Andrew? No, you trust him. You do what you got to do, and he'll meet you at the faith. Trust him for it. Do what you can. But remember, when you lack, God knows, and he has made promises to us that we will hold on to, saints. Trust the Lord. Trust him. What do you got going? Do you feel like you are powerless? Trust the Lord. Do you feel, do you, do you, do you know it? Remember, it's not about feelings. If you're born again, you've got the power of God available for you. Know it. Rely upon it. Because that's all we got in life. I'll tell you, Paul's prayer is that we may know this. And we forget it so often. We forget the power of God. We rely upon ourselves. We rely upon something else. But God wants us to trust and to have faith and believe in him. He's got you covered. Watch what he does. The power of God towards us. Know it. Live it. Experience it. You won't regret it. I love you guys so much. I, I, I know I say this so often, but I, I yell out trying to get my voice out there. But I'm not angry. <laughs> I'm just trying to project. But I love you guys, and God loves you. Know that. He loves you so much. He loves us. And he is going to, he puts his power towards us. How great is that? He, he makes us born again, and then he strengthens us with his power. Trust in the Lord. Have faith in him for all things. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just thank you so much for the power that you have given to us at the cross, at faith. And Lord, if there's any man or woman in this place right now that doesn't know you, they've walked away from you. And Lord, you're just pushing upon their heart to give their life to you. Lord, I pray that they would cry out and ask that you would forgive them. That they would cry out and ask to be forgiven. Lord, if there's any man or woman here that is just feeling weak. They feel like they have nothing left. They feel spent. Lord, let them know of your power that's available for them right now and come upon them by the Holy Spirit. Lord, I just lift up all of us that we would be so plugged into you that we would have the power of God upon us constantly. Lord, come upon us with your Holy Spirit that we may live in the power that's available to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and worship the Lord.
Jesus loves you. I love you. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy your naps and lunches. God bless you. Bye-bye.